We join no money. No money. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the back pain didn't uh, stop him doing certain things, so no problem with that. I wanted to ask a little more about that. It's like, if you could just kind of describe that kind of training, especially for people who don't know too much about it, just how, what, how, how long have you guys been doing it, and what does that entail, um, the, the altitude training? Have you seen kind of the videos of it? It looks like fun, fun thing, like a lot of fun things. Like. No, listen, I think that I made a mistake. <laughs> because... Uh, the I saw video also and uh, and listen this is a this is not a big topic you know so I should have uh, shut my mouth and uh, and uh, do what we need to do because uh, again this is something normal we didn't invent anything we we just did uh, something that uh, we think that it could be good for the player to do it but again. Uh, this is not because we do that, that we're going to win the game, that we're going to be uh, outstanding. I don't know. We do that to uh, give tools to our players uh, to adjust a bit quicker. But it's been proven also that uh, we can do that. And this is the individual. This is really individual. What, what does it mean by that is you can do it, but if you are not able to sustain the altitude, you can do it for many days, it won't change. So this is just a, a normal uh, 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 um, exercise that we, that we do to, to help the player, and, uh, and, th and that's it. But the most important, and I just had a, a meeting with my players, is this is not about what we do with the bikes and so on. No. This is what we're going to do on the pitch. This is the most important because uh, I'm going to give you an example. If we don't have the ball for, uh, if you don't take care of the ball, we're going to be out of breath. <laughs> so, so, but if we have the ball, we're going to be better, you know, to be able to repeat the action. So the main topic is what we're going to do on the pitch with the ball and without the ball. And this, this is just an extra, like we can do, like we want to uh, make more runs and so on. But, uh, Last thing I want to ask is, um, you know, Pachuca has had a couple, a, little, a couple of weeks since their last match, and you guys have obviously played a congested schedule. How do you think that, how, what do you expect, like, the difference of you guys having to play those matches mm -hmm. and them having such a big break will be in does it give them an advantage, you feel like? I don't believe it at all on that. You know, it's been a debate from decade with MLS when you are champions and then you don't play for two or three weeks. Yeah, I don't believe on that. Um, because, again, uh, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to try to be clear. Uh, they haven't played for a long time. Apparently, they can be rusty. Okay. We score an on goal. And we, they win the ball on that, on this, on this goal over there. And we play really well. So what we're going to say? Um, maybe they get to, so I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's a final. It's a final. And you know, when you play a final, what I've learned is, uh, is the, the human being, when he's tired, he can push 20 or 30% more if he wants to do it. So for us, it doesn't change. To be honest with, with you, I don't know how they're going to be. They're really aggressive. They're going to be like that. If we, it's our us, we're going to be able to, uh, to manage the ball. If we manage the ball well, or if the game is a ping pong game, maybe it's going to be easy for them and difficult for us. And if this is the opposite, it could be uh, the opposite. I don't know. But I don't have an answer. It's a good question, but uh, every year I have it. and. I don't have the, an answer for that. In a similar vein, they've obviously had the time to watch you guys these last several matches, whereas they haven't played since the, the playoff loss. Um, how much do you go back to those games, or do you look at what they've done in Champions League versus the uh, MX when you're when you're viewing uh, Pachuca's team and, and what you want to expect from them? Mm -hmm. No, look, to be honest, the way we've been walking. Um, doesn't change. 
uh, the idea is to uh, is to watch. Uh, usually, what we like to do is um, when we face a team, um, when we play away, we try to uh, to watch uh, three games, four games when they play at home, and uh, one or two games when they play uh, away. So this is the idea. And after that, uh, we try to see uh, patterns. We try to see certain things. But what, we, what we've learned is uh, many teams they like to change everything when we play against them. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that, and I'm happy the way I see things because um, I like to uh, adapt, you know, during the game. And uh, I remember when I, I was an assistant coach. That's why I'm, I'm so pleased to to to, uh, to have this moment because. Um, I've learned many things that uh, I was at, at this time. I was uh, also scouting teams, and uh, we were preparing something, let's say, in a 4 4 2, and they were playing 5 4 1. <laughs> so, what do we do? <laughs> you know, so, no, it doesn't change, to be honest with you. Uh, we the, the week hasn't changed in terms of the way we do things, the way we train. Uh, we try, they know that there is a final, they know that this is a big game, but. Um, the, the same, I'm still demanding with the players as uh, last week. Have you seen when you have played some of the Liga MX teams in this tournament that they have changed tactically, like you mentioned? Obviously, MLS teams have, have adjusted to you guys, but have you seen that from the, the teams from Mexico as well? Yes, they did it uh, uh, during the game, and they did it also in the beginning of the game. So uh, Tigres did it a bit, not the first game, but the second one because uh, apparently it was the first time that they were facing a team with the, the, the way we play, but uh, they put us in trouble, but we were able to adjust after a few few minutes. And, uh, and Monterrey also, uh, they, they tried to hurt us, you know, in certain areas, because we know that we can be vulnerable on that. And, um, and after that, they changed also their approach to, to defend. So I think, you know, this is a chase game. You know, can I say that? Yeah, so... So and it's normal as a, as a coach. You want to uh, to uh, few coach few coaches. They like to put a lot of focus on the opposition, and other coaches they do they are in between. So, but y yes, it happened every game. To be honest with you, every game. Now it's a final. Usually they play in a four four two, really aggressive. Maybe because we play back three, they're gonna play with a four two three one to press with the front three. But I don't think that they're gonna change. They will maybe adapt. You know, what they like to do, teams, is to play with the back five or to ask the winger to drop as soon as possible. But this is a normal adjustment, you know, so, so we'll see. And at least having Cucho available, um, obviously you guys are a team. You've shown that throughout your time here. But having a player like that available for a final, how much does that at least give a boost to guys knowing you're kind of at as close to full strength as, as you've been here the last few weeks? Oh, he's gonna have to. Um, it's, it's just. It's, it's more for him, you know, to be able to, to to go back uh, LT and he's LT for the moment. And uh, and we know Kucho, we know the team, and uh, the team is uh, with Kucho. And when we have to play without Kucho, we play without Kucho. So the idea is, uh, he's gonna be available. So um, he wants he wants to to have a good game, and uh, and we want that also. So now. We have to find the balance because when we are so excited to play the game, sometimes you can overplay. So, but no, we are all happy that he's back and, um, and hopefully he's going to be able to have a good performance and we'll see after that. Coach, given your relationship with uh, Frank Klopas and the history with Montreal in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, I was just curious if you had any final words with him after the second time you played Chicago. I know he's got a game against LA this weekend. He probably can't fly to Pachuca. <laughs> <laughs> so, what what sort of uh, words of encouragement did you get from him? No, I was close to tease him a bit, but uh, but he was not happy with the after the game. So uh, it was not the moment to uh, to have a joke with him. But uh, no, he just uh, congratulated me and uh, and and uh, and the team and to good wishes, you know, for the final. But. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have, uh, to pick to tease him a bit, but it was not the good moment. So understood. <laughs> he won't he won't come, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, six offside calls against Orlando on Saturday night. Was that a function of the way they were playing, or a function of the way you were playing? And if it was a function of the way Columbus was playing, is that a part of the evolution of your team? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you mean offside for us? No, uh, uh, against them. They were called offside six times. When they attack, we were defending. Yes. Uh, just to be clear. Yes. Uh, no, this is not an evolution. This is something that uh, we put a lot of focus. We did it last year. And we like to show, you know, uh, clips regarding uh, when this is the edge of the outside, just to tell them that we move with the ball. And, you know, we travel with the ball. So the idea is, is it possible to gain space? Uh, where is the ball? Because this is so difficult for the forwards of the opposition to readjust their run. We don't play the offside, we play the offside by itself. So the idea is to be connected with the ball and to try to be comp as, uh, as compact as we can. And because we believe that if we are like this, it could be easier for us to win the ball and to do the counter attack also. But uh, this is something that, yes, we've been working on last year, but this year we didn't put more focus on that, but um, I am, this is the second year, so I am more demanding in terms of body position. You know, so how we can step up the line instead of having the shoulder square, is it possible to have the shoulders, you know, in diagonal like this, to be able to see the play, instead of jogging like this, can we jog like that, you know, all these kind of details, to be precise and to have a chance to put doubt on the opposition. This is the main topic, but... Uh, it could have been more offside, but, uh, but uh, yeah, this is something that uh, is, is important. This is a good tool for us, but like I told you, we don't play the offside. We try to play the offside by itself. You talk about putting doubt on the opposition. Uh, coaches talk about how defensively you want to make play predictable. On the attack, you want to be unpredictable mm -hmm. for the opponent. Um, how does Diego Rossi make play unpredictable for your opponents? Ah, it's key. It's key because um, um, it's about his profile, you know. So he's been better now. So we know that naturally. That's why we uh, Diego was important for us to have him because um, naturally he likes to make the run in behind, you know. And we have certain spaces that are really dif difficult to defend, you know. If we do, if we have the road, the good connection between the ball carrier and the guy who make the run. It's really difficult to defend few spaces. And Diego is really good at that. So now he, he needed to be better now back to goal, you know, under pressure. Mm -hmm. to Because we like to uh, 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 attract the opposition when we need to do it. And the most important guy is, last year was the guy around the ball. But now this is the guy in front of the ball. And, uh, and when we attack, if the guy between the line is connected, he could play or as a number nine to make the run, or he could play or as a number 10 to check. And Diego is really interesting to do both now. Mm. And that's why within our concept, within the way we play, peop the people, my players are uh, free to find who is the free man. And this is a, we just did a video, and the idea was to show them um, the goal that uh, we scored against Montreal, the last goal. We made um, almost 20 passes, and also the goal, the disallowed goal against Montreal also, when we made almost 30 passes. But I told them I enjoyed the, the last goal of, Kuch, of um, Diego against uh, Orlando, two passes. Mm -hmm. And this is this, when we talk about uncertainty, certainty for us, but uncertainty about the opposition, this is exactly that. So that's why. The, the game against Pachuca is going to be a key point, this how we're going to manage the momentum. Because they like to press, they play like a Red Bull a bit, you know, in terms of pressing, I mean. So if we are able to break the press, it's going to be open and we have to attack. But what does it mean? It means that four or five guys are going to stay behind. And if we lose the ball and we are not connected, the game is going to be a ping pong game. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to size up the, those kind of moments. And for me, this is not about bikes and uh, what we do, attitude is good. <laughs> but this is about controlling this situation right. because they are really good on that. I uh, tried to get Diego to crack a smile yesterday about the <laughs> production that he's had in front of the goal of recent games. Uh, you've talked about how scoring goals reminds players of being kids because that's what kids always want to do. Are you seeing a little more of the kid come out of Diego now that he f is probably finding a little more of a rhythm in the season? Or? Well, uh, honestly, uh, 
Diego is a bit like me, you know, so my, mo my mom likes to tell me that, hey, smile a bit, you know, try to smile. Yeah. Because <laughs> but uh, I smile a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and Diego is the same. On the pitch, he's happy to be on the pitch, you know, every day with the way he trains. This is not the guy who is going to talk a lot, but this is someone that um, is going to get the smile on his face, you know, and uh, because he's been struggling, I would say, to score goals, and we know that to score goals, this is good for forwards. <laughs> So, and like I told you, the, the, the PK, Minnesota, he had the PK. It's bad what I'm going to say, but he, he knows that. We, we, we were not sure that he would score because his mindset at this moment was not an the post, you know. And Orlando, we knew because this is assumption. This is what you perspective, what, you, what we can see, you know. So good for him, good for him. But uh, no, he likes to smile and uh, he's, uh, he likes to joke. Sometimes the jokes are not uh, all the time funny, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have uh, you have an outstanding uh, bit of your resume in terms of success in tournaments, both with Montreal and in Columbus. What is it about Wilfried Nancy in these tournaments that changes? If anything, no. Um, for me, there is no uh, the, the same desire that I want to compete and uh, have joy is the same when we play uh, Detroit. You know, um, what I like in my job and the way I am is uh, is uh, how we're gonna prepare the team. What we're gonna do? Okay, what details? Details uh, to be specific. Help the team to uh, to have a good uh, a good connection, a good uh, to give clarity. And when I see that, I'm so happy because uh, what does it mean for me is we can face a team from uh, Mexico or a team from uh, uh, MLS. We are able to play the way we want to play. And for me, this is my winning part, I would say, because when I see that, it's a good uh, trigger for me and it's a good uh, yeah, trigger for me to see, to, to see my players that they are focused on the task. They are not focused on, OK, we have to win. Yes, we all want to win, but what we have to do to win. And this is me, this is what I'm looking for in my job. So that's why I'm proud of uh, what is happening with uh, obviously um, in the game mix about the results, but I'm more proud of uh, the way we played, and this is the most important for me. Thanks. We'll go to one more question in the room, and then if we have time, we'll circle to the folks on the Zoom. If you're on the Zoom, if you don't mind raising using the raise hand function, if you have a question, that would be much appreciated. Coach, it's, I got a two part question for you. The first part is you're going into a a big match for the club, for the organization. How do you guys fight through the nerves before, you know, you travel down there and then also on the game day? And then the second one is you guys have had success, you know, in your system changing tactically. And how are you able to fluidly change tactically within the game? Um. doesn't change because at the end of the day, uh, the spirit that we have, uh, we know it's a final. We know that there is uh, many things at the end of the, the game. But the way we are is uh, the moment. And the moment for the moment is to train the team and to be good on the certain things. And uh, when we're going to play the game, we're going to play the game. And we we'll see during the game, how everything's going to be. And now, if you ask me the question live, I will tell you. <laughs> but for the moment, no, I cannot control the result. I cannot control how what is going to happen in the future. So just be focused on this moment. What can we do we won last year? What can we do to win again? And to win again, it's all about be good on the task. I, I am redundant, but this is exactly uh, what we have to do. So if we think about uh, World Cup uh, clubs and so on, okay, 
at the end of the day is what we're going to do on the pitch and the, 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 to be clear on that. And uh, tactically, the change, again, my job is to help the team to uh, achieve something. So we work every week to, uh, to play with different animation, depending what we want to do. So if I need to adjust tactically, I know that my players are ready for that. So it doesn't change. This is all about the emotion after that. Cool. We'll do a last call if anyone in the Zoom. Um, if you all are good, we can take one more in the room. Unless everyone is good. Cool. Thanks for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. So much. Thank you.